Hi there, and welcome to Treasure It. My name is Sarah, and today I'll show how, as an IT administrator, you can protect your company's data with policies and easily manage your users. In this video, we'll focus on the Admin Center, which is accessible only for the administrators of a Trezor it account. We have another one specifically designed for end users, showing the coolest features Trezor it has to offer. All right, let's get started. First off, I sign in, and I click on the Admin Center button on the left. This takes me to the Trezor it Web Access. From here, I can access the Admin Center. The Admin Center is available for the subscription owner, as well as co-owners and co-admins. The subscription is administered by one person who has an extended set of rights. This person manages the billing and users, and can also put security measures in place to protect confidential company data. Co-owners and co-admins are invited by the admin. Co-admins can do all the most important operational tasks like inviting and deleting users or assigning them to policies, but they cannot manage billing or delete accounts. In addition, co-owners can also reset lost passwords for users. The Admin Center serves as a hub where I can see the most important usage metrics and I can manage our users and the subscription. Let's start with a dashboard. This page shows me how many active users we have in the account and how many devices they use. I can also see what kind of devices our team access Trezorit with and how much storage is left for collaboration. Trezorit account-related activities are listed on the right. It lists activities like someone was added to the subscription, someone created a folder, or if someone changed a policy template. Okay, let's see how to manage users in Trezorit. Whenever I need to add or remove users or perform different actions, I go to the Users tab. This is our team who use Trezorit. And I can see their status here. As you can see, we have an owner and some users. The owner is the administrator of the account. Users are the people who use Trezorit but they have no access to Trezorit account details, such as adding new users or changing the billing. We have a new sales colleague in our team, so now I'd like to add her to Trezorit. I can add a new user with the Invite Users button. I can add users one by one, or I can import from a CSV if I have many people to invite. At this point, I can already predefine the new joiner's policy, which determines their access level and Trezorit rights. I'll talk about this feature in more detail a bit later. For now, I leave it on default. And the invitation was already sent. Going back to the list now, I can already see if the invitation was accepted or not. If I'd like to know more about the users, I can get information by clicking on this cog wheel on the right. I can see which template I set for them, which folders they have access to, what kind of devices they use Trezorit with, and their latest web activities, including the location where it happened. For instance, I know our finance team is located in Zurich, so it's very suspicious when I see that someone accessed Trezorit from another city. Trezorit's product team knows that the process of offboarding users is extremely crucial. No matter the reason, you have to be sure that data won't be accessible for the deleted person. Fortunately, offboarding employees is very easy with Trezorit. I just click on the cogwheel and delete the user. And that's it. I don't have to do anything else. Trezorit takes care of all other steps. It will automatically block the user from accessing data, delete the application from their devices, as well as all synchronized files. I'll talk about synchronization in detail a bit later. To make sure that we keep company data secure, we set up different policies for our Trezorit users. I can do that under the Policies tab. Obviously, I don't want to give the same rights or access to everyone, so I use policy templates to set up our users' access level and rights. Here, I can add new templates or edit the existing ones. Let's create a new one for my new sales colleague. I type in the name of the template. This feature here is called Data Residency Options. 
With data residency options, you can select where to store company data. This can be extremely important when a company needs to satisfy a company policy or a local or industry-based regulation. For now, I set it to Switzerland. Now that I created this template, I can fine tune it a little bit. Since our sales team is always on the go, I want to make sure their devices are always protected. So I turn on mandatory two-step verification. We provide laptops and mobile phones for our sales team. So I want to limit the allowed devices only to those platforms. IP filtering comes in handy when you want a team to access Trezor it from a specific location like the office. But since our sales team works a lot outside the office, I won't use this option for now. As an extra safety measure, I enable auto deletion for shared files. This means that all expired shared links and their contents will be automatically deleted after 90 days. Our sales team shares many files with our partners and customers. For example, contracts or documents with sensitive data. I enable them to create file sharing links, but I add restrictions to make sure the links will stay secure and only the intended personnel will access them. I set a maximum expiration limit for the links they create. Whatever they share with their partners will be accessible for seven days only. Links will be deactivated at the expiration date, meaning the shared files won't be accessible via that link anymore. And to make sure that only the intended people will be able to open the links they create, I make password protection mandatory, as well as the access logs, so that we can always track link opens. It means that they can see when the client opened the link, and they can also see if somebody failed to add the correct password. I can also disable downloads for all shared content, but I don't need this setting right now. Session control defines how long your users can stay signed into Trezorit. They will be automatically signed out when the session expires. So for now, I set it for seven days. For security reasons, I want them to sign in again when they run Trezorit the first time they log into their computers. So I disable the Remember Me function. Trezorit can create a contact list, which appears in the app. This contact list is a list of people who are involved in the subscription or have access to certain folders. I want to help collaboration within the teams, so I enable it. Trezor creation is important if you want your team to be able to create main folders where they can decide who has access to them. I'd like to have total control over what data they store and share, so I disable it. With Trezor sharing, I can disable inviting members to a Trezor, or I can let my team share them internally or externally as well. Since this team will never have to share Trezors externally, I set it to only for subscription members. Trezor synchronization is a really cool feature. Our users can sync selected cloud files or folders on their devices, so they can access and work from them even offline. Whenever they're back online, it will sync the changes in the cloud and the other way around too. For additional security reasons, I don't allow sync for now. It means files will stay in the cloud where I have much more control over them. Okay, it looks like this policy for sales is ready so I can pair my new sales member with it. I go back to the Users tab and change the policy for Eve from Default to Sales. And that's it! I've already provided a secure workspace for her and upcoming sales colleagues to work in. The Reports tab helps me to oversee document management and collaboration across the company. Let's see what we have here. Trezor Summary. I use this report when I want to keep an eye on what's happening on a certain project. We create a folder for each project, and this way I can see folder activities, such as document creation, deletion or sharing, and who the most active collaborators are. Shared Links. This report comes in handy when I want to see what kind of files are being shared. If I see any suspicious activity, I can withdraw links as well. Link Activity. Here, I can monitor all shared links within my company's Trezorit accounts. This is a very detailed report on all links and gives me all the information I'd find in the links access logs as well. External Users. This feature helps me to monitor external collaboration. This way, I receive a list of external people who have access to some of our company documents. Trezor Members. This is a quick way to see who has access to which folders. It gives me good oversight on who is collaborating on what. 
We have further available reports below, and I'll let you discover those during your free trial. The Trezorit subscription owner is the person who can manage the account's billing. I can add or remove users, change the billing period, or edit payment details. I could cancel the account as well, but why would I do that? The next thing I'd like to talk about is the advanced control. This provides an added layer of security for our company. Have you ever had an employee who forgot a password or lost a laptop or a mobile phone? No worries, Trezorit has a solution for that. Passwords are crucial in Trezorit. Your password is the first step to generating the master key that can decrypt your files. Your Trezorit password never leaves your device, and not even Trezorit can access it. Trezorit has such a secure approach that only you know your password. If you forget it, Trezorit can't reset it for you. But if you turn on Advanced Control, the subscription owner and co-owners will be able to. The other benefit of Advanced Control is that the admin can remote wipe any device if it gets lost or stolen. There is one more feature I wanted to talk about. It's called Custom Branding. With Custom Branding, I can match our file download page's design with our brand guidelines. I can quickly upload my company logo and set my company's primary color. My company uses other services to manage our employees, so it's very handy that I can connect our Active Directory to Trezorit with the Active Directory connector. This way, user accounts are synchronized across different platforms. I can also set up Single Sign-On, or SSO for short, for our team. In this case, our users can use their Azure ID or Okta credentials to sign into Trezorit. This makes user management simpler for our IT team. I want to make sure that all employees are part of our Trezorit subscription, so I enable domain verification. After verifying my company's email domain, I set up this feature so that everyone who registers to Trezorit with our email domain is automatically added to our subscription. So, these are the most important admin features of Trezorit. We have another video focusing on the end user features where you can learn more about how users can store and share and collaborate on files securely. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.